Welcome to The Entrepreneurial Lawyer, How to Grow Your Law Firm, a podcast for managing and growing your legal practice. Lexicon CEO Dan Cuneo and Director of Legal Operations and Training Sarah Rutan Bates discuss how to make your law practice profitable in the modern legal industry. Hello, and welcome back to part two of our discussion from last week regarding practice management software. I'm your host, Dan Cuneo, joined again with my wonderful co-host, Sarah Rutan Bates. Let's tune in to the continuation. So something that I hear a lot, which in my opinion, and would love to hear from both of you, um, but something else that is really important in a practice management system is timekeeping, billing. I know a lot of people who don't have a timekeeping system in place. I like to call it- I have it, a watch. Ah, is it Apple? I do have um, an Apple watch. <laughs> I, I have it in my pocket because it tracks my steps. That's that's really smart. <laughs> that's a good idea. Well, I got tired of counting them as I walk. No, I'm like you. I have a lot of really nice watches, but I quit wearing them because I want to count all my steps and get my fitness. Okay, sorry, Sarah. Um, but timekeeping- Uh, I like to call it people leave time on the table when they're not tracking their time or they don't have accessibility to a system to do it right there on the spot. Um, Sarah, from your experience, is is timekeeping something that law firms are are desperately seeking out a system and the ability to do this more accurately? Yeah, and I I think having that within a practice management tool is a great benefit, right? Because instead of using, you know, all these different platforms, if everything's under one umbrella, it makes it more efficient to utilize. Whether you're tracking your billable hours or your non-billable hours and trying to see, you know, where you're at and how each attorney is utilizing their time, it's essential. You and I have talked offline on the benefits of efficiencies and the right software and the right services. And you touched on one, well, two particular very important items. uh, And then really kind of the, some of the the lifelines of a firm, which are your assistants and your paralegals. But in this new age that we're in this hybrid environment, remote work, you can really have virtual paralegals and, and virtual receptionists, right? Or virtual assistants. I think that's preferred now. People prefer to have people at home and people prefer not to have offices, right? Especially solo and startup firms. You, you raise a really good point, which is where I was going with that is in your experience, what are you seeing? I'm seeing in the last 10 years, I think it went from, you know, everybody got out of law school and they went to go work at giant firms, uh, you know, whether to earn their stripes or to pay off their student loans. <laughs> I think it's turned into more of, we can do this a couple of years out of law school or we can do this right out of law school or, you know, people who were in big firms are, are, are breaking out and they're doing their own thing. And they're, and having a practice management tool or having virtual receptionists and virtual paralegals, that's key because a lot of these people are starting them from the trunks of their car. <laughs> right? They're, Is that a thing? Yeah. Well, isn't saw, that the Lincoln lawyer? I, yeah. Right? I mean, such I, a good movie. <laughs> and a great book too. <laughs> That is a good book. Um, yeah, a lot of people are starting in their basements, starting from their home, and maybe they maybe they can't have a paralegal come in, right? And a virtual paralegal, virtual receptionist, that is that works. I listened makes- to an interview, uh, probably was maybe a couple weeks ago or so, to where there was a lawyer, and she had a her practice from a boat, a sailboat out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, just sailing around and running everything from the sailboat because she is able to have a great practice management system in place, but also utilize these virtual services. It was just such a, an interesting interview to really know how valuable that some of these services can be. And, and it really, it, it, it allows for efficiency, but it also allows for you to maximize your work-life balance too. I have a good friend that's a lawyer and he has four kids and he's actually a stay-at-home dad and he works from his bedroom. <laughs> Dan wants to be a stay-at-home um, doggy daddy. I try. <laughs> <laughs> With Stanley. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's let's think a little bit more, dig a little bit deeper here for our listeners on what are some more of those key aspects that they're going to benefit from by using a practice management software. So we have uh, covered previously matter management. Um, we've talked a lot about creating these efficiencies, having more flexibility to do your job from any location. We've talked about timekeeping. What else is there? I say billing and reporting. So not necessarily billing your time, but you've already billed it. But now the ability to actually push it out, invoice it, send it to your client, you know, collect and run the appropriate reports needed for possibly how many hours you've billed against a certain matter or um, how much you've collected. What are your thoughts on that, Sarah? Oh, just like everything else, I think it's vital. I think, I mean, that's probably the most nerve wracking things for attorneys, right? Billing (laughs) and um, accounting, their license uh, is in the balance there, right? So I think that again, under in a practice integrated into a practice management tool where you have kind of everything is is working and integrated together, um, having billing is one of the biggest concerns for lawyers. Yeah. And I think having a system again, where you're capturing your time real time, right? Um, It eliminates that human error aspect. I know the old school way was you wrote it down on a piece of paper and maybe you uh, then logged it or submitted it over to accounting, but that is real time. And then when that billing period has closed, it gets pulled into WIP, right? Isn't that what Finance Dan taught us? Work and in progress. W- that's right. Not not a car, not a car. <laughs> um, and then from there, your your systems can actually just generate your billing statements directly to your clients, which is... I would have to think a huge weight off of these attorneys' shoulders. So that's not something that they're manually having to do. What about the ability for better communication and collaboration in a practice management system? Ooh, that's a a good one. That's always a top five, if not top three, bar complaint. Communication? Mm Mm-hmm. See, you know, it's like a family, you know, you have to have good communication, you know, the way you present yourself to your clients, right? You you want everybody to, to know what's going on inside your firm, right? You want everyone to have awareness or knowledge of where a case is at so you don't fumble in front of your client, which could be huge. And be able to communicate that to your client in an effective way, which would be more probably long, I would think along the lines of status updates. And it doesn't have to be every day or weekly or biweekly or monthly, whatever is preferred for the client to just make sure that they are up to date on what's going on in their case, because nothing is worse from a client's viewpoint. I have no idea what's going on. I remember when I was a partner at a a litigation firm and clients would come in from other firms to hire my firm and the number one complaint would be, I have no idea what's going on in my case. And it right. just always just shocked me that that was the common theme. They had no idea. And when I say that, no idea, I'm not just talking about from a strategy standpoint, which they should know, or even a procedural standpoint, but they had no idea that they even had a court date coming up. Because I would always check if they, they had a case online or if it was in a county that had their court system online is to check when their next court date was. And they would always be surprised. I'd walk in and I'd say, oh, I see you have a court date coming up. And just a look on their face. I do. Uh, right. I know. I was like, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but that's why having these systems in place is just so important because it can remind the attorney to update the client. But then it also is a good reminder to the attorney that they need to still check in on that file just to to make sure that things are, are moving along and, and nothing is really falling through the cracks. So, Sales Sarah, let me just ask you a very direct question. In, in your experience, what would you tell an attorney are the top must-haves and they should be looking for these features within a practice management system? I think billing and, and timekeeping, you know, integrated in one spot. And then I think, you know, having your matters management where you have document management and whatnot, and then communication. I think all those three things are no brainers. You know, there, it's a competitive market out there. Not only it's good to be efficient and, and up to date on the latest you know, tools that are out there, but um, it's going to make you a more productive attorney because you're going to have less things to worry about. 
Okay. So from your standpoint, not to put words in your mouth, but the benefits <laughs> of having the timekeeping, matter management, billing, communication, um, it's really to, I'm hearing more automate to make the attorney themselves more effective, more efficient, to take some of that burden off of their shoulders that maybe they've been carrying because they've been handling a lot of this in a very uh, manual way. Any yep. other benefits that our listeners need to capture? When you have less stress for these types of things, you're going to be more profitable as a firm, right? Because you can put your your energy in, into other places. You can work on growing your practice or work on working on fine tuning some things and just be a more productive, successful attorney. Yeah, and that's where that reporting comes into play because you can really get a a sense of how your your firm is doing. Get that that health check as far as where where are we at now? What are we projecting? Where were we at last year? Overall, what is the the health of the firm? And that allows the partners to really make those informed decisions on who do we need to bring on board so we can either scale our practice or what do we what do we need to do? What positions do we need to to fill or bring on board to continue to increase our revenue and and really look at that that bottom line? I agree. What about a, a practice management system that would have multiple timekeepers? Would that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> because we as in you mentioned it earlier that you just get pulled away and and, and do different things, and it'd be nice to have a system where you have a multiple timekeeper who can pause one, start another when you have to, when you're interrupted or something urgent happens, finish that file, pause that time or conclude it and then jump back in. So you're not losing time, but also you're really having ethical billing practices too. So the client is, you're not estimating time. Uh, And some attorneys fall into that trap where they estimate overtime or you're losing time for what we were talking about because you're, you're not really putting in your full time. You know, that's extremely beneficial. I, I think it would be silly. And I, I believe Sarah, sales, Sarah, you did this. Um, this has been incredibly helpful. A lot of good tips here, good information uh, that we've left our listeners with. But, you know, we encourage any attorney out there to explore implementing a practice management system if you don't have one, or maybe you do, and it doesn't do everything you need it to do, um, but explore your options. We here at Lexicon, we actually do, in fact, offer a practice management software system. Uh, if you're interested in getting more information, of course, you can check that out at lexiconservices.com. And Sarah, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, Dan and I greatly appreciate your your time and all this information. Yeah, no, thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. We look forward to having you back on again. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and send this information over to your friends and colleagues. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneurial Lawyer, How to Grow Your Law Firm, presented by Lexicon. Lexicon is a legal software and services provider that enables lawyers to do what they do best, practice law. Tune in next time with our hosts and be sure to subscribe and leave your review on your preferred podcast streaming platform or by visiting lexiconservices.com. Lexicon.